Hello and welcome. This is Bill Pomaris from BandSolution.net. The purpose of this video is to give a solid browse through my book entitled Essential Studies for Beginning Band. I thought I'd make a short video so anyone interested can get the idea of the content without having to purchase a copy. The reason I started writing my own exercises and eventually this book is because I always felt that most method books that I've tried don't give enough practice with the concept before moving on to a new one. I also felt that most method books try to teach too many concepts at once. My experience has been that students become confused and get frustrated trying to incorporate all this information at once and become discouraged. So I've tried to be very thorough in this book. Whenever there's a new concept introduced, there's a lot of practice given with the new concept. And then there are songs given for practice that incorporate that new concept so the students can see how it's used in a real song situation. <clears throat> Where possible, I have included familiar melodies to help the student. This book is probably similar to most band methods that are currently available in terms of the teaching sequence. This book is written as a unison, full band exercise book, a band book, so to speak, as opposed to an individual instrumental method. For me at my school, this is a two-year book. My first-year students start at the beginning of this book and complete up to about page 25 or 26. The second-year students complete this book. The book is transposed for the instruments you see here. There is no conductor book or book to go with this series. Since the exercises are simply unison exercises, I just conduct from the percussion book because it gives me all the information I need about what the students are playing. The table of contents for this book with concepts and rhythms and scale studies can be downloaded from my website on the Essential Studies page under Educator Essential Studies. You can download that file and print it if you wish and follow along here so you can see how the book is laid out. Next to the table of contents, there is a product support password for downloads from my website. The password can be used to download supplementary materials that I will post in PDF form on my website. Uh, so here we have home practice sheets, and then uh, we have rhythm exercises, which I actually start before the students have their instruments in hands so that they can get used to performing rhythms together as a group. And then after that, we have um, a written out description of what I tell my students during the first lesson. Uh, I don't necessarily have the students read this other than to, than to say, if you forgot what we did in the first lesson, when you practice at home, read these pages, go through the steps. Uh, depending on your perspective, you might not like my approach to sound production, in which case, skip these pages and instruct it your own way. Nevertheless, um, there are pictures for um, sitting position, standing position, performance position, um, with some even more basic posi positions for some of the instruments uh, before we start using uh, the fingers to press buttons and that and so forth. Um, after that, we have beginning notes for band, and uh, the percussion books are all written with uh, an A page and a B page. The A page is always snare drum and bass drum, and the B page is uh, written for bells, uh, flute parts, uh, essentially, uh, and it's even marked as flute on the top of some of these pages. That's because um, the bell parts in the performance music mirror the flute parts anyway. So here we start with full strokes in the percussion and full strokes on the bells using concert B flat and concert F. Uh, I've found that those two notes as beginning notes have worked really well. Uh, then we move on to beginning band exercises, page one. Uh, percussion, are, you're working on full strokes, and everybody else is switching from B flat to C. A whole page of exercises right here, uh, just dealing with those two notes in different combinations, different rhythms, so they get used to switching back and forth between those two notes. Uh, after that, percussion are working on tap strokes, and Everyone else, you know, the wind parts are all C and D. Page three has the students working on uh, downstrokes and percussion. And this is the first combination page for the winds where they're using concert B flat, concert C, concert D. Whole page of practice using different rhythms and patterns with that. 
Uh, page 14, another page of three note combos while the percussion are using uh, three stroke combinations, full tap or downstrokes. And I will specify which stroke to use or they can choose their own. Uh, lots of room for flexibility on this page with percussion. And you get the chance to have some fun with it. By the time they get to the bottom of this page, they're actually doing a simplified version of Mary Had a Little Lamb in exercise 34. Exercise 35 is at Piero's door. And at this point, I usually have the students go to page 20 and do the first three songs. Hot Cross Buns, Piero's Door, I Lost My Closet Key. All right. After that, um, we're on to buzz strokes in the percussion, a whole page of practice. Everybody else is doing D to E flat, a whole page of practice using the same basic patterns that they've been working with up to this time. Um, the next page is four note combos, a whole page of practice for the winds, and percussion are working on upstrokes. Next page, full buzz down and upstrokes for percussion. It specifies which to do when, and everyone else is doing E flats and Fs. This page goes by usually fairly easily as they already know the F from earlier on. And the next page is five note combos. And again, I will, it's not marked here, but I usually will have the percussion switch it up as to what stroke you're using. <clears throat> On to five note scale studies. This way they can practice doing those five notes in a sequence as a scale. And then we're on to more songs. Uh, two four note songs here. This next page is all five note songs. Percussion are starting to add in eighth notes in pairs and in groups of four. Uh, the next page uh, introduces three four time. A couple exercises of that just to kind of get their feet wet with it. Um, and then page fifth or exercise 15 starts to introduce flams and three note songs, concert G, F, and E flat. Those three notes are used here. Um, again, uh, one more three note song. Percussion are starting to use flan taps. The rest of these songs are all six note songs. More six note songs. More practice with flan taps. Uh, six note songs continue. Paradiddles are introduced here. Um, and then 29 and 30, this is where the note T, uh, that is a uh, concert A below concert B flat, is introduced in these songs. And this way they have, by the end of this, they have seven notes that they're familiar with. Um, this is about the last page I get to in my situation for my first year students. Uh, sometimes they go a little bit further, sometimes they don't get quite this far, but uh, anyway, this next page is all about developing uh, the five note scale uh, in more advanced patterns using more eighth notes. We learn a few more new notes, concert A flat and concert B flat, to go on to concert E flat major. It's the same five note patterns, they're familiar with them. Now we're just adding a couple more new notes in. When we get onto this page, um, Practice songs in 3-4 time. Uh, we're introducing first and second endings. We're also introducing this idea of internal repeat. The winds are also adding in slurs and staccato notes. And that's about as complex as I get it in terms of uh, combining concepts on a page. Um, on to the next page, co uh, practice songs with eighth notes, more First and second endings, percussion are doing a few um, uh, accent strokes here. Reminder of paradiddles. On to dotted quarter notes. Uh, I found that the nine stroke roll works really well with this rhythm. And uh, the students are given a lot of practice with the dotted quarter eighth note pattern in most every measure that they have. Um, the first five exercises, it always starts on beat one. Exercise six through ten, it starts in the middle of the measure on beat three. On to page 31, where this concept is uh, taken a step further using songs. 
And a lot of these the kids know already, so it's just a matter of plugging the notes in. Concert F major, five note scale warm ups and patterns. The percussion students are using 16th notes at this point, and also combinations of 8th, 16th, and then 2 16th, 8th. Eight note chromatic warm up. On the winds page and, and this bells page, there are fingering charts underneath each of the notes so they can fill in the fingerings. And this is where they start um, using the nine stroke roll and also starting to develop the five stroke roll using the, the background rhythms that they already know, applying that knowledge. The next page, introducing eighth rests. The first five exercises has the eighth rest appearing on beat three in every situation. And then six through 10, the eighth rest appears on beat two in every situation. We practice counting through these and then playing them. Uh, the notes are kept very simple. We're using only five notes uh, for these exercises. There are no crazy strokes to be used here, just uh, simple full strokes for percussion. Uh, the notes are kept simple so they can focus on the rhythm. The next page, same idea. First five exercises, rest is on beat four in every situation. And then 16 through 20, follow suit, the rest appears on beat one. And then on to songs that use the eighth rest. And then uh, um, Easy March, uh, this is written as a trio for the winds, a melody part, uh, an accompaniment part, and a bass line part. Has first and second innings, key change for the trio section, internal repeat, second ending. Percussion part also adds a timpani part, and there's a separate crash cymbal part written. Scales and patterns in three keys. This is so the kids can get used to switching keys. And then we're on to eight note scale warm-ups and patterns using the full octave in concert B flat. Then the same in concert E flat. Then the same in concert F. More practice sheets. Two solos, the Little Dance for Haydn and the Sonatina, gives them practice uh, applying concepts that they've learned earlier in the book. Uh, a timpani part is also included for percussion. Uh, this appendix, How to Practice, gives steps for the students to use to, so that they can learn whatever song they want to learn. If the students are having trouble with something, I reference this page. Music writing assignments, some basic um, writing skills introduced. This is for the first year students, that's for the second year students, usually towards the end of the school year. And then a first and second year band checklist, and then target practice for band, which is more of a brass lip slur kind of exercise, uh, but re works really well for the uh, woodwind students, uh, getting them to use and incorporate the chromatic fingerings that they've learned. Uh, if your students require extra sight reading practice with the uh, concepts developed in this book, I highly recommend reading exercises for Beginning and Intermediate Band Book 1. This book correlates rhythm and key studies exactly to the essential studies for beginning band. There are 309 one-line exercises that give practice with the concepts introduced in the essential studies book. So that's it. If you like what you see here and you think you can use this to some advantage with your first and second year bands, you can download order forms from my website, bandsolution.net, and order a set using a purchase order, or you can have your school district pay for them using a credit card through PayPal using the links provided on the site. I feel that my students have been very successful using this book, in particular due to the amount of repetition contained in this text through having lots of exercises and songs to play that reinforce the concepts that are presented. It's been my experience that the students are able to apply the concepts that they've learned here to new situations also, whether learning new songs in band, sight reading, or learning solos on their instrument. Thanks for checking this out, and good luck.